two dice question. There's one tool you should always use, and it's a... It's a dot diagram. Okay, so in that, I've given you, I think, I've given you a space on the right-hand side where you can draw. A dot diagram is going to look like this, okay? So the dots will come later. What we're using is two axes to represent two dice, right? Um, a die can go from one to six. I'm going to go one, two, three, and so on. Like so. This is in the box. And now what I'm going to do is, depending on what the question says to me, I'm either just going to put dots here, or if you read the question and say, ah, oh, what am I doing with these two dots when I roll them here? Am I adding these numbers? Am I multiplying them? What's going on? When you have a look, just to scan down A through D, Most of the questions are just about what are the individual numbers together. Um, D is the only one where it's like, well, what's the sum? But I think that's easy enough for us to just add in our heads. So this dot diagram, for the sake of speed, I'm just going to put dots, right? Um, which is where the name comes from. So this is what it looks like. So for yep. A and B, um, would it be acceptable not to have any work Would it be acceptable? Okay, um, the short answer is no, because you're working out is this okay so this is this is the working out that i would be looking at as a marker to see what's going on for how did they arrive at their answer okay, okay. because if it's if it's for example like i could i could make any of those questions a uh, two mark question i could if i wanted to okay and if you see that two marks that indicates to you oh i can't just put down a number they're going to be expecting something like this Yep, yeah, absolutely, which is exactly what we've done. Um, which is why you wouldn't see both of them be two marks, one of them would be two marks, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, they're clearly assigning this, the working, in one of these particular questions. All right, let's have a look. Now, yeah, question. If it was like part C that was worth two marks, mm -hmm. but you drew your diagram in part one, would you be like preferred part one? Or just yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I would do it like this. Here's question, whatever, question one. Right, and then here's my diagram, and then I'm going to do A and B. And I'm just—they're all referring to this. They are all referring to this. Okay. okay. You guys, right? Okay. Now, I said before, um, colors will help you here because we're going to ask answer several questions on the same diagram, and they get modeled up quite easily. So, number one, what's the probability that a one or a two will be on an upper face. So we don't worry about whether there's going to be multiple of them or not. So have a look at your diagram, right? You can see the dots give you the sample space, all of the different number, th number of things that could happen. How many different things are there? There are 36, six by six, so that's not too hard. How many of these 36 have a one or a two? Okay. A one or a two, right, on an upper face. Now, for example, let's just think about this slowly. If this die rolls a one, right, have I satisfied the condition they asked for? And the answer is yes. I don't care what the other die is now, right? So all of these guys, they all have a one, right? A one and a something. Wait, does that make sense? Yeah. Wouldn't that mean that like the first one doesn't count because he has two ones? If I have a look at this. Is there a one or a two on an upper face? The answer is yes, there is. Right? So um, I said before, you know, principles, probably the one thing that I didn't say on your table, maybe you want to add it on the bottom, is um, read the question really carefully. A single word, a single word, sometimes a really small word, like a conjunction or something like that, will change the question they're asking you entirely. Okay? Is there a one or a two? It didn't say anything about not having a double up. They could say something like that, but in this case, they have not. Okay. So this guy's fine, so is this guy. And you can see, based on this principle, I can keep going, right? Uh, over in this column, once I've got a two here, the other die can be whatever you like. They're all good, okay? And then not only can these be ones or twos, but these ones can be ones or twos as well, right? So I'm going to go around like that. Okay, done. So, 
You can also see, right? One of the lovely things about a dot diagram is it helps you not overcount things, right? Not overcount things. So up here, were I just to say, oh, well, there are 12 ways to get the one or two and one, and there are 12 ways on the other, but some of those are the same event, right? It's where you get doubles, a one and a one, two and two, etc. So how many dots have I circled? I have circled 20. So all I need to say is that the probability is 20 on 36. I think it's highly advisable to write down the actual fraction, and then if you want to simplify, that's going to be 5 over 9. Because you wouldn't believe the number of people who simplify in their heads, don't put the work in, and then um, they write an incorrect fraction down, which they can't ignore subsequent error because that's the only thing you've got.